Okay, our reading this uh, morning will be in <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 16, and we're going to read um, 1 through 20, Proverbs chapter 16, 1 through 20. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> let's bow in prayer before we start. Holy Father, we thank you for your holy word that speaks to our heart. Uh, we thank you, Father, for um, salvation, saving us from the lake of fire. We thank you, Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection. Uh, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who have been reconciled. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy. As the word goes forth, Father, bless it to our hearts as we uh, take it in. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Proverbs 16, <clears throat> 1 through 20. <clears throat> the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works Unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. For the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings. And they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. <clears throat> In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. How much better is it to, be, to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trust, trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Okay, we're just going to go right there to verse 20. So <clears throat> let's continue our study now over in Revelation. <clears throat> we're working with Revelation 5, verse 5. <clears throat> <clears throat> Revelation 5, 5. <clears throat> and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. All right. So um, <clears throat> why does he tell us weep not? Remember in, uh, in verse four, it says, I wept much. 
and then in verse five, it's and one of the elders said unto me, "Weep not." Now we already know that we've uh, from the scriptures that chapter four and verse four tells us those elders are believers. Look at verse chapter four, verse four. Round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold now when you're clothed in white raiment you're saved see uh just just flip over to chapter three <clears throat> look at verse five he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment see and i will not blot out his name is i will not blot out his name out of the book of life but i'll confess his name before my father and before the angels so to be clothed with white white raiment is salvation and so these elders and 24 would be the fullness of what's in view 12 24 144 uh those are all numbers given uh, to uh imply fullness of what's in here what's in view is the elders so it'd be the fullness of believers and each one of us are clothed in white robes spiritually we're saved we're clothed in christ's righteousness see and uh and to have the crowns on your head means that and and it says of gold it means that we reign with christ uh, just like a king reigns and so um go back to chapter five now um uh we're not in verse 10 yet but look at verse 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth say so kings reign and that's why it says uh they had on their heads crowns of gold so don't don't think that there's a literal 24 thrones in heaven and 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 there's literal crowns on of gold on their heads our heads it's it's figurative spiritual language that um that is he that is uh is is here for us to as the holy spirit shows us what those are pictures of see and so um go back to revelation 5 now the one of those elders so we know those are believers said unto me weep not okay now the reason uh it says weep not because our lord jesus christ has prevailed and he has um uh conquered satan and uh, at the cross but let me show you how um this word weep not uh is used go to uh luke chapter 7. <clears throat> when we weep not it's because we've been born of god our sins have been washed away see and uh and christ um uh through the cross uh has saved us see so uh we weep not if you will see um look at luke 7 look what the lord says to this woman here starting with verse 12 and now when he came nigh luke 7 verse 12 now when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold there was a dead man carried out now i want to say that this dead man is a picture of uh the condition of uh before we're saved we're spiritually dead and and it goes with ephesians 2 where it says that we being dead in our trespasses and sins and so uh, uh same with the lazarus being dead uh now the lord has to raise us from the dead see and that would be salvation so behold there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not, see? And just like one of the elders said, 
and and to weep not is to know that uh, Christ has uh, is the power of God to raise the dead, to bring salvation uh, to his people and uh, to wash our sins away, see? And so weep not. And he came and touched the bier, which is the coffin. And, and they that bear him stood still and, and which standing still also is, is a picture of salvation. And he said to the young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. Say, And so um, uh, I wanted to go to 16. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us and that God had visited his people. So just remember the condition that you and I are in before salvation. We're dead. A dead person can't do anything. He doesn't make a decision. He doesn't accept things. That person is a corpse. He can't hear. He can't see. Uh, he can't respond. He's dead. And you can see only the Lord Jesus can raise us and save our souls. And that's why we have these things in the Bible. See, God teaches us that salvation is all of the Lord. And so he that was dead sat up. See, And so the power of God came upon this, this young man. And he, he, that's a picture of salvation. So, and to speak is, is the gospel. And that's what happens when we get saved. When God raises us up, uh, we begin to speak the gospel. See? And so um, uh, this is, uh, but, but the Lord says, weep not. See? It ties in with uh, God's power and that he had victory over Satan at the cross. And uh, through the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, we uh, we weep not because uh, God has um, conquered Satan. Say, look at uh, Psalms chapter thirty. Look at Psalms thirty. Look at verse five. <clears throat> Psalms thirty, verse five. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. See? So when you work with this language, uh, see how weeping uh, is, is uh, right in there for, uh, with the night? So it would, it would tie into um, uh, sin. It would tie into uh, uh, Satan's dominion. Uh, weep not. So to weep not uh, would be the day, would be the morning, but joy cometh in the morning, see, which would be uh, salvation. See? So weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So uh, there you have the weeping in there. And then one more is in, uh, uh, go back to Luke. Look at Luke 13, 27. And 28. <clears throat> but uh, Luke 13, 27 and 28. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out, say. So you see how also weeping is associated with hell, say, weeping and gnashing of teeth. So to weep not would be Christ has saved us and that he's the one that uh, uh, wipes our tears away, if you will, or our sins. And it says that, go to Revelation chapter seven, <clears throat> <clears throat> Look at Revelation chapter 7. Look at four, verse 14 through 17 there. 
I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, which would be salvation, say. Uh, the remaining of God's elect will come, uh, will come into salvation during the great tribulation period, say. And so to wash to have and, and have washed their robes and made them white is the same as being uh, clothed in white raiment, like we said earlier about those elders. Now, verse 15, therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, uh, neither thirst any more, remember because we now are we feed upon the gospel and uh, uh remember in, in john 4 the woman at the well jesus says if you uh drink of this water that i shall give you shall never thirst and so we we take in the word of god the gospel of christ so that's why it says they hunger no more neither thirst anymore neither shall the sun light on them which in this language would mean the wrath of God, see? Uh, neither shall the sun light on them. Uh, that would imply God's wrath. So we're no longer under God's wrath when we're saved, nor any heat, see? So this, the heat or the sun lighting on them would be a picture of God's wrath. And, and he says, during this time, or when you're saved, uh, this uh, the God's wrath is no more ab uh, upon you for the uh, now verse 17 for the lamb uh, which is in the midst of the throne uh, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water which is the gospel and shall wipe away all tears see weep not shall wipe away all tears from their eyes see so it's it's not literal tears. It's really uh, speaking of sin uh, to wipe away. Uh, he wipes away our sins. That's what salvation is, that God um, cleanses us from our sins. Eh? So here tears uh, are kind of tie into the weeping. And, uh, and that's why the Lord says, weep not. Say. So uh, I wanted to bring those verses out to show uh, why is he saying, weep not. And, and so there you have the verses. So go back to Revelation 5, verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Okay, so um, we know that uh, the Lord Jesus is the lion uh, of the tribe of Judah. And, um, um, and so um, you could read about that in, in Genesis 49, where uh, he talks about Judah, and he says he's a lion there. And so you could read about that in Genesis 49. But what I want to do is, why does... Um, he used that word lion. So go to Proverbs 19. <clears throat> we already looked at this language when we went through uh, chapter four, because remember the beast, and it says, uh, liken unto a, a, a lion and a calf and a flying eagle and a man. And so <clears throat> we already looked at uh, <clears throat> the, the lion. And so I just want to touch on it again. Look at uh, Proverbs 19, 12. <clears throat> you see that this lion would be a picture of Christ. The king's wrath is as a roaring of a lion. See? And so um, the king would be Christ. And the roaring of a lion would, would be his wrath, say, upon that person. And so um, remember, the word of God uh, is a two-edged sword. It, it brings salvation and brings uh, judgment and damnation. So 
um, but his favor, let's see, his is the king, which be a picture of Christ, is as dew upon the grass. The dew uh, is the word of God. You can go to Deuteronomy 32 and read one and two there. And it says his, his words drop as the dew. And so uh, the grass it would be believers, see? But his favor is as the dew upon the grass or the gospel, the word of God upon believers, see? And this is, this is those he has favor upon, which would be the elect. He has favor upon the elect. So the word of God is upon us just like it says, so we're likened unto grass, say, there. And so look at um, uh, Psalms, um, or Proverbs tw uh, 20, look at verse 2. Proverbs 22, 20, verse 2. The fear of a, of a king is as a roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul, say. The Bible says uh, God is angry with the wicked every day. And people don't realize that we're only here a short time on this earth. And yet they have to spend, each one of us has to spend eternity somewhere. Your soul is going to be either heaven or hell. If you're saved, of course, you're going to be in heaven. But if you're, you're not washed of your sins, uh, this is what the verse says here. The fear of a king is as a roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. See? So we don't uh, provoke the Lord to anger by uh, sinning and going after false gospels. Uh, that's provoking him to anger. See? So what we want to do is walk in Christ. And look at the um, last one is in Proverbs uh, 28. Look at verse one there. <clears throat> 28 and verse one. <clears throat> the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Say bold as a lion. Christ is bold. And so that's why it says the lion uh, from the tribe of Judah. So, and he's the king. It says he's the king uh, uh, of, of um, uh, well, and uh, if you're in Proverbs, look at ch chapter 30 and look at verse 30. A, a lion, which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any, see? So Jesus is strong, and he's um, uh, the lion from the tribe of Judah. He's king of kings and lord of lords, see? All right, so go back to Revelation, and, and I want to look work on this word prevailed. So the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. And that Greek word, it means conquer, overcome, uh, get the victory or victory. That's that word prevailed in the Greek. And um, um, uh, all these Greek words tie in to the cross when we overcome, see? And that's why um, we prevail through the cross. Um, remember uh, chapter 3, look at verse 21, Revelation. To him that overcometh, Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne? See, we can all we overcome through what the Lord Jesus has done, uh, through his power. So he he's the one that uh um defeated Satan at the cross. Go to um uh, Hebrews chapter two, it'll say that. Look at Hebrews uh chapter 2 uh it says he destroyed him look at verse 14 <clears throat> hebrews chapter 2 look at verse 14 um 
It says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, that's Christ's death, that through death he might destroy him, that's Satan, that had power of death, that is the devil, see? And so through the cross, God, uh, as it were, judged or destroyed Satan at the cross, see? And that's why we have power over uh, darkness uh, through the blood of Christ. So he's the one that has uh, prevailed. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Look at verse uh, 55 through 57 there. First hmm. Corinthians 15, 55 through 57. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us, us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's that word prevail means uh, conquer, uh, get the victory or overcome. And so you could see uh, Christ is the one that through the cross, uh, we weep not, see? We have salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he, we, he has power over Satan. He dealt him a, uh, a death blow, if you will, say, at the cross. And so through the cross, we have eternal life. And that's why um, is the gospel, his death, burial, resurrection. Um, I wanted to mention one thing. Um, also, go to Ruth. Joshua Judges Ruth. <clears throat> okay, go to Ruth. Um, <clears throat> got to work those pages in in Ruth. And some of some of your Bibles are probably stiff. We get to those those little books like that. Um, Joshua Judges. Look at Ruth uh, chapter four. Look at verse se seventeen. And the woman, her neighbor, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now, these are the generations of Perez. Perez begat Hezron. Hezron begat Ram. Ram begat Aminadab. Aminadab begat Nashon. Nashon begat Solomon. Solomon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obi, Obed, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. So uh, remember, uh, uh, he's from the tribe of Judah, right? So keep that in mind. Obed uh, begot Jesse, so Jesse was David's dad, and it says there, Jesse begot David, see? Now go to um, Matthew chapter one, and you could see how it ties into uh, Judah there. Matthew chapter one. <clears throat> look at uh, look at five and six. Solomon begat Boaz, Boaz of Rahab, Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. And we just read that. And Jesse begat David, the king, and David, the king, begat Solomon of her that had been wife of Urias. And uh, <clears throat> remember back in, in uh, he's talking about, he's going to bring, um, uh, uh, in verse 2, Jacob begat uh, Judas or Judah. And his brethren, see, so that so now you have the line of Judah. It, it starts with two there. See, Abraham, Jacob begat Judah. That was one of uh, Jacob's sons, Judah, and so the tribe of Judah. And then I just want us to go to sixteen, and Jacob begat uh, Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So you could follow that line all the way 
uh, you see, from Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat, begat Judah. And now, you see how he, he, he could have picked any of his sons, but it was God's will that he was going to come through the line of Judah. And that's why it says Judas there, but it's it's Judah and his brethren, see? And then it goes on and tells you who Judas begat Perez and and uh, and so forth. And you keep following that down. And then and then it says in 16, uh, uh, it was born Jesus, who was called Christ in verse 16. So it all goes down from the line of uh, starting from Abraham, if you will, uh, and um, uh, according to Matthew right here. And so there's the, that's why you would, uh, you go back and it says the lion from the tribe of Judah. So we just followed the line, uh, uh, the lion from the tribe of Judah. We just followed the, the birth line there. And that's why it ties into Judah. Okay, so go back to Revelation. Look at, uh, so he prevailed to open the book. Okay, now <clears throat> the great tribulation it is something that has to be fulfilled before the Lord Jesus Christ comes or before the end of time. It's the same thing. When, when the tribulation runs its course, uh, that that's as uh, soon as the tribulation runs its course, that's the end of time. Everybody that has been it, written in the book of life would have been saved. See, so God has his hundred sheep, if you will. And he goes and finds that one sheep that's lost. And when every one of them is found, uh, then he has the complete fold, which would mean every every one of those uh, names have come into salvation. See? And so there are the few remaining that will be saved during the Great Tribulation. As, as we've been reading, they come out of Great Tribulation and they're clothed with white robes. See? And so... Uh, but uh, it seems like uh, church after church is going astray from the word of God. And uh, just, just it's a warning. Be careful. Uh, you, you watch those ministers. They walk and they don't even use their Bible. And they just walk around and, and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, it's a, and don't, they don't bring the whole counsel of God. And so a lot of it is tickling the ears, say, and and not bringing this the full whole counsel of God, which, which, uh, um, which is the way it is today. And so beware of all those things. But these things have to happen. Go to Luke twenty one. Look at verse twenty two there. In Luke twenty one. <clears throat> Luke 21, look at verse uh, 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. See? And this, the great tribulation uh, must be fulfilled before the end of time. See? That's why it says all things which are written may be fulfilled. And so um, this is the thing. It's a, it's a mystery. Uh, but God reveals these things to his his saints or his people, his believe, believers. And so um, that that during near the end of time, Satan will be loosed and he'll take his seed in the churches like we uh, we looked at the last week or two. OK, so go back to Revelation five. He opens the book. He's the one that's going to loosen the seals. And uh, and that Greek word uh, loosen it means to loosen. See, and only God can can do these things. Uh, he's the one that uh, can loot. It's also used in salvation, which I brought out a, a week ago. Um, <clears throat> uh, God loosens uh, us, and because Satan binds us, see, and uh, he binds people that are not saved. And when we become saved, it's as we're loosened of that uh, being bound, bound by Satan. Look at uh, 
um, look at Luke 13. I'll, I'll give you an example here. Um, <clears throat> look at Luke 13. I'm going to start with um, uh, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together uh, and could no wise lift up herself. And um, you could see that 18 years, you have the number 666 that would make 18. So these are those that are unsaved and uh, uh, which this woman is and to be bent which this greek word means bowed together it's it's bent and uh, and and she's not straight this is the nature of man it says they're bent spiritually and god has to straighten us up and so um so bowed together and could no wise lift up herself say you can't save yourself you can't make yourself straight the Lord Jesus has to do these things. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. See? And that's how uh, people are before salvation. They're bound by sin. And now the Lord, it's uh, has because he's, he's the power of God. Uh, Jesus is the power of God. He says, thou art loosed. See, he has to loosen us from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight. See, salvation and glorified God. And so people are walking around bent spiritually, millions and billions of people. But those that are saved were straight, see, spiritually. God makes us straight and we glorify God. And so the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which ought uh, to work, and then therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord then answered him, said, thou hypocrite, doth not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering? And so uh, that ox and donkey are a picture of believers. That's what he, the Lord Jesus just did to this woman. He, she, he loosened her and he's saying, Does not, you do the same thing. You go and loosen your ox and donkey from the stall and, and give them water. And I'm doing the same thing to this woman, see? And so, of course, the watering would be what? The gospel, right? That's what we drink when we when we're saved. We drink the gospel. And now 16, and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound, say, lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond and on the Sabbath day. See, Satan binds people in their sins. And and you could see only God could come to that person and loosen them and he'll he'll come to every one of those in the lamb's book of life say and those are the ones that that he's chosen in him or predestinated and those are the one he goes and finds the son of man has come to seek and find that which is lost say so uh he found this woman which is one of his sheep and 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 now uh and he says, ought this woman being a daughter of Abraham, spiritually really a, a picture uh, of one of uh, his sheep or one of his elect whom Satan bound. And this is, again, the condition we're in before salvation, bound by Satan. And, uh, and, and God has to loosen us, see? And so once we're loosened, we have eternal life, see? It says immediately she was made straight and so soon as the lord uh calls us with that holy calling or soon as he comes upon us uh, we're saved right then you're saved and and uh, uh the holy spirit uh, 
stays in us, the spirit of Christ abides in us, and uh, he'll never leave us nor forsake us, the Bible says. And so um, uh, he's the one that loosens um, uh, Satan. So I want to finish again by going over to Revelation 20. Uh, I know I covered this before, but um, <clears throat> uh, maybe you're hearing it a second or a third time. Uh, it sinks in. It sinks in. And maybe you, see, you can see it clearer. Look at Revelation 20, verse 1. <clears throat> I saw an angel come down from heaven. That angel is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has the key of the bottomless pit. See? Um, uh, let me just show you real quick. Go to Revelation chapter 1. It says, I have the keys. Remember that? Revelation 1. And... Uh, uh, look at verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. See, and now he's conquered him, Satan at the cross. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. See, so that's that angel would be Christ. It says having the key of the bottomless pit, which is a similar picture of hell. And so Go back to Revelation 20, verse 1, and a great chain in his hand. Now, again, it's figurative language. That great chain it would be God himself, God's restraining power, holding power. And this is what uh, he only will allow Satan to go as far as that chain, because the Bible says Satan goes about as a roaring lion. But he's only going to go as far as that chain will allow him, see? And so um, uh, we have a picture here of, um, of God's restraining power. Now look at verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him. So uh, Satan was bound at the cross, see? And... Uh, <clears throat> Keep your finger there. I want to show you uh, in Mark. <clears throat> Look at Mark 3, 27. <clears throat> Mark 3, 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house. That strong man is Satan. See? No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. See? So Christ bound Satan at the cross. Now Luke says, unless someone stronger than he um, come upon him. And of course, Christ is stronger. And so, uh, but I'm using this verse because it uses the word bind right there in 20, Luke, uh, Mark 23:27. 20, so go back to Revelation, and it says he bound him, see? And, and, uh, uh, and so he bound him a thousand years, which is not a literal thousand years, because uh, uh, it's been more than a thousand years since Christ went to the cross. So he's bound a figurative number, ten hundreds, thousands, or completeness. So he was bound completely at the cross, see? He's bound for uh, the completion of from the cross, and it's going to tell us when the thousand years are, are finished, fulfilled, he'll be loosed. So that thousand years uh, would be the completeness of Satan being bound, which is from the cross to the beginning of the great tribulation. So look at verse 3 now. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, see, once he's loosed, he'll be loosed a little season. And that's the, the great tribulation period. That's when Satan's loosed. This has to, this has taken place before the end of time. All things must be fulfilled, it says, which are written. The great tribulation has to run its course 
And when it does, then the end will come, see? And then um, if you go down to verse, you know we're right on track because you go down um, to verse seven. And when the thousand years are expired, uh, that's, we're taking, we're going right from three down to verse eight, uh, verse seven. When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. That's that little season in verse three. And shall go out to deceive the nations, see, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And so you see how Satan's army, he goes and attacks the saints, and they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints, see? And Satan's, uh, his nature is to, is to destroy the gospel. Uh, remember, they stoned Stephen. They crucified Christ. Who did that? It was the religious people that had another gospel. They did those things. And during the Great Tribulation, they'd want to silence the gospel, see? And so um, uh, this is the nature of the Great Tribulation, see? And, and at the end of time, fire will come down uh, from God out of heaven and devour them. And so only God can loosen Satan. And that's why it says, who can loosen these, these books, the, uh, the seven seals? And so, like I said, when we get to Revelation um, uh, chapter 6, we're going to see that uh, the, the first seal that was loose, and we're going to see it's, uh, it's Christ and the gospel going forth. And then the other seals, we're going to see how um, uh, Satan is loosed and, and the uh, destruction he does uh, during the time of great tribulation. But only God can, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, can loosen these seals. That's why I showed you he's the only one that can save us. He, when we're bound by Satan, he loosens us uh, and we're set free. The truth shall make you free. And he's the only one that can loosen Satan to, to start the great tribulation period, see, when the thousand years are complete. A figurative number that the, the time he was bound from the cross to the beginning of the great tribulation uh, would be those thousand years. Or you can say that's the completeness of Satan being bound from the cross to the beginning, which implies uh, points to that thousand years. So don't look at that thousand years as literal. It's a figurative spiritual number. Okay. And so we're seeing how God uses numbers throughout the Bible. Just like I said, when, I, when we first started Revelation, God, we, we have to understand numbers and their spiritual meaning, words, and their spiritual meaning, and the great tribulation when we work through Revelation. And so we're seeing a lot of this now. We're in chapter five. And so, um, uh, and so Lord willing, next week, um, we're going to look at uh, uh, chapter six, and we're going to have some of these words uh, that we have to deal with. And uh, what is seven horns? What is that a picture of? Was, why seven eyes upon the, the lamb and the seven spirits? So Lord willing, we'll pick it up next week, uh, chapters five, verse six.